So this problem has three variables in it, and we want to find which value of x, y, and z would work for every single equation. So we are technically solving the system of equations for three variables. You're used to doing that for x and y. That's what we reviewed on Friday, but now we're going to have x, y, and z. So the first thing I want you to recognize is, are the variables lined up? What do I mean by that? Are the x's, the y's, and z's organized nicely? Before we can do anything, that's the first thing you have to ask yourself. If they weren't, we'd want to rearrange them so they are all lined up correctly. The second thing is, is there's no wrong answer, but there will be an answer that makes your life easier. So I want you right now to examine the x's, examine the y's, and examine the z's. When you look at the x's, are there any two that when you combine them, they would just cancel out? Like if you combine 3 and 2, they don't cancel. 3 and 5 doesn't cancel. 2 and 5 doesn't cancel. So x would not be ideal to try to eliminate. Same with the z's. 4, 3, 4, 5, 3, 5, they don't cancel nicely. But when you look at the Y's, it's a little bit easier to cancel things. So right now I'm examining the variables to choose a variable that is easiest to eliminate. I believe for this particular problem, it will be easiest to eliminate the y's. So that's what we're going to start with eliminating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose two equations, and I'm going to choose the first two. So really small, I'm going to write down the first equation. Underneath it, I'll write down the second equation. We do just two equations at a time. If it's my goal to eliminate the y's, right now the y's don't eliminate if I combine these two equations. Ideally, if I could cover up this y, ideally what number would be in front of this y so that when you combine the two, they would just automatically cancel? What should be here? A negative 2 is what we want. But is this a negative 2? So I'm going to put parentheses around the outside. What number times negative 1 would equal a negative 2? So put a 2 on the outside. And now when I go to my next box, I'm going to do choose appropriate number to multiply by. Choose the appropriate number to multiply by. And maybe you don't, maybe you write smaller than I do, so you don't actually need to come all the way down. You may be able to do another box still in that first line. But now in this third box, I'm actually going to distribute that 2 to everything inside of the equation. So it looks like 4x minus 2y plus 6z equals 8. So I'm going to distribute the 2. I'm going to distribute the 2 and combine equations. Distribute the 2 to the second equation and now I'm going to combine equations. When I combine 3x and 4x is 7x, positive 2y and negative 2y cancel, that was our goal. 4z and 6z is positive 10z, and 11 and 8 is 9. Now this is where you're going to take the highlight off and box it in. When I refer to the boxed equations, this will be one of them. If you don't happen to have a highlighter, just box it in with the pencil extra dark.
Okay, in the next box, which, I should say, of the original, which of the original equations have you not used? Anybody, which of the original equations have you not used? Look back to the original. The first, the middle, or the last one? Okay, so write the last one down. You have to continue canceling or eliminating the same variable. What variable did I eliminate last time? I eliminated the y. y. So I have to continue eliminating y again. So if I want to cancel out or eliminate the negative 3y, will that be easier to do with the positive 2y or negative 1y? There's no wrong answer, but there is an answer that's easier. Will it be the 2y or the negative 1y? Negative 1y. So I'm going to take everything from the second equation and write it down. Now, as it stands, they're not going to be able to be eliminated. So I'm going to go come down, and I'm going to rewrite those equations. And I'm going to put parentheses around the second equation. And just like we did earlier in this problem, we need to determine what is opposite of this particular y. So opposite of negative 3 is a positive 3. I want to multiply by something that gives you a positive 3y. What number times negative 1 is a positive 3? So put a negative 3 out front. And now I'm going to multiply the negative 3 by everything in that equation. Okay, let's combine the equations. So 5x and negative 6x is negative 1x. Negative 3y and positive 3y is, well, they cancel. Remember, we're going to simplify to a 0y. And positive 5z and negative 9z is a negative 4z. Negative 1 and negative 12 is negative 13. Box that in with your highlighter. These are the two boxed equations I'll refer to, boxed equations. So I'm going to go on to my next page. And I'm going to start by making a box and underneath it I'm going to write boxed equations. Please write down the two boxed equations you have. plus 10z equals 9 and negative 1x minus 4z equals negative 13. Okay, now this goes back from here on out. It's everything you've learned freshman year. So as it stands, will your x's automatically cancel out when you combine? Will your z's automatically cancel out when you combine? Vivian, what do you need to do? Good. So we put a parentheses around this. Put a 7 out front. So I'm going to multiply by the 7. And I'll help you out. I know that last one you don't have to use calculators is a negative 91. Now after you multiply by the 7, you're going to combine these two equations. So the x's cancel, and you are going to have different signs subtract. Keep the sign of the, the larger number. Different signs subtract, and I think I messed up here. This shouldn't have been a 9. This should have been a what? 19. 19. Thank you. Different signs subtract. Keep the sign of the larger number. Now divide by negative 18. 
and we are just a few steps away from getting our final answers here. Negative 72 divided by negative 18 is a positive 4. I'm going to put like a little cloud around that so it stands out. Okay, we have about three or four boxes left, but they're much easier than what we've been doing. Okay, I want you to look at the two box equations we have. There's no wrong answer, but there is an answer that makes your life easier. Which out of these two equations looks easier to work with, the top one box equation or the bottom? There's no wrong answer. The bottom, okay, write down the bottom of the equation. And wherever you see a Z, I want you to substitute in 4 and solve it this time. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Substitute in 4 for Z and now solve for the X. Okay, so I'm plugging in a 4. Negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. I'm going to add the 16 to the opposite side, equaling a positive 3. Divide by negative 1 and x equals negative 3. I'm going to put like a little cloud around that. So z is 4 and x is negative 3. All right, on to the second to the last box. Please look at the, at the front side of your paper and look at the first three original problems. Again, there's no wrong answer, but there is a little bit of an easier answer. There's no wrong answer. Look at the first three original problems. I want you to choose one that you think looks easier to work with, the easiest to work with, and I want you to write it down in this place. Do that right now. Out of the three original equations, write down which one you think looks easiest to work with. I'm going to choose the middle one. You could choose the first one or the last one. You'll still get the correct answer at the end. I'm going to substitute a negative 3 in for x, a positive 4 in for y, and I'm going to solve for the missing variable y. So it's 4z, negative 3 is x, I'm solving for y. When I'm done, I write my last box is an ordered triplet. You're used to ordered pairs where you write an x followed by y. Now an ordered triplet, meaning three, will go x, then y, and then z. In parentheses, x, y, and then z.